Greetings. It's time to share some thoughts and a cup of tea together. So, how much self-compassion do you have for yourself? I've recently been adding some to my life. Uh, Kristen Neff and Chris Germer are champions of self-compassion and Kristen Neff talks about the yin and the yang of self-compassion. The yin part is the more feminine side of us, um, a more passive and nurturing side, and the yang side is the doing part that makes changes, providing ourselves with what we need and motivating ourselves. We all have both of these within us, male and female, yin and yang, whichever way you want to look at it. There are three basic components of self-compassion. The first is kindness, to state the obvious, being kind to ourselves. The next is common humanity. We're all in it together and whatever happens to us, happens to others. And lastly, mindfulness. So having an approach of being open and mindfulness of our struggles and of our pain. And then there are three areas to consider under each of those elements of self-compassion. They are when we protect ourselves, when we provide for ourselves and when we motivate ourselves. So just a little bit of explanation here, for instance when self-compassion is aimed at protecting ourselves, it feels like a fierce empowered mother protecting her children and has very clear boundaries, no that is not okay, you will go no further. As far as common humanity is concerned, it's about standing together in strength. We're empowered by our connection with others. And then in mindfulness, there's this real sense of clarity around this, this is not okay. And then when self-compassion is about providing for ourselves, it feels different because we're giving ourselves what we truly, authentically need. And in this case, kindness feels very fulfilling and satisfying. When we give ourselves what we need, we feel fulfilled. When it concerns common humanity, we recognize there is a balance required. In other words, we don't just give to ourselves or we don't just give in to the needs of others. There needs to be a balance between our needs and others' needs. And then in mindfulness, it gives us a real sense of authenticity. What do I need? Do I even know what I need? And lastly, if we are motivating ourselves, kindness arrives as encouragement. It isn't kindness when someone needs to be motivated and they're stuck to just say to them, oh well, don't worry, it's fine. Or if it's ourselves we're talking to when we're not feeling happy and, and, and if we say to ourselves, oh it's fine, it's okay, don't worry, it'll be all right. Kindness means we don't criticize ourselves, we don't call ourselves names. But what we can say is, you, of course you can do it, go for it. Kindness is a very encouraging quality. And the common humanity of motivation kind of sees how things are related to each other. And it comes from a bigger view of interdependence. In other words, the causes and conditions that uh, came together to create our suffering. So, when we motivate ourselves, common humanity actually manifests as wisdom. We can see where we're stuck, why we're stuck, what mistakes we made, and we kind of understand the bigger picture of what's happening. And in mindfulness, under the motivational umbrella, it's insight. It gives us the vision to see what we need to change in order to help ourselves. So in this case, kindness, common humanity and mindfulness feel like an encouraging, wise vision. There will be changes that we need to make if we care about ourselves and don't want to suffer. We all want to be our best selves and mostly we want to be safe and happy. And if we don't get this right, we beat ourselves up over and over again. So what voice is more effective? The one telling you how bad you are, 
or a voice that's encouraging and supportive. We're definitely going to listen to the encouraging and supportive voice. We're also going to be able to take in what that voice is saying more readily than a voice who's just shutting us down. And this leads nicely into another element of self-compassion, which is constructive criticism. This is an element of wisdom where you can ask questions like, what mistakes did I make? How can I do it better next time? This is a really caring, understanding, and compassionate approach. Self-criticism normally just gives us unhelpful information like, you're bad, you did it wrong, do it better next time. It doesn't say, what do you do differently or how to do it differently? It doesn't see the bigger picture at all. It doesn't see the bigger picture of the causes and conditions that led to the outcome. So the wisdom of kindness provides us with an insight of, oh, I see, I did this, maybe I can try this differently next time. It gives us choices when we let that wisdom in. And evolution points to negative emotions narrowing our focus and limiting our insights. And any possible wild, wise choices that we might be able to invite in, we only see what we did wrong and how we did but positive emotions like kindness, safety, warmth have the opposite effect. The effect of broadening our perspective uh, so that we can see a larger vision to see possibilities. Oh, I could try this and I could do it this way, which would be much better for us. So the research that Kristen Neff and Chris Goma have done really backs this kind of encouraging wise voice of compassionate motivation. It's actually much more effective and more sustainable in motivating ourselves.